Okay, it is uh, getting the live stream ready. I will let you know when it is live. Okay, it is uh, getting the live stream ready. I will let you know when it is live. Okay, we are live. All right, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the School District of the City of York committee meeting for November 8th of 2021. And we are going to go ahead and get started. We apologize for the delay. We've had some technical issues. And so let's get started with the Athletics Committee with Director um, Glover Brown. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. At this time, we'll have a report from our Athletic Director, uh, Mr. Jeff White. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. So our, as you know, the fall season's over. We just finished up on Friday. So we don't have an academic per se academic report for this week because we have no teams that are playing. Um, the next academic report that I that I have to report on will be the next of oh, the end of end of quarter grades, which ends uh, November thirteenth. This will affect obviously the the winter sport um, participants, any athlete that is falling below two point oh for the first quarter will have to sit 15 days before he or she participate in practice or play. So that's the next report that is, is coming up on the 13th of November, and that's the end of the quarter report. The uh, winter coaches will utilize coming up also as the fall coaches did, the Tuesday and Thursday teacher visits for all their students and for any students that are, that are below 2.0 average. We established for athletes to play. The fall sports, <coughs> excuse me, fall season update. <clears throat> As I stated before, we just, our football team made the district playoffs. We were number, we were the number four seed in district playoffs. We had a home game this past Friday. Um, did not come victorious in our game. Uh, we fell to uh, district three, Wilson out of Reading. And our season concluded Friday night. Um, soccer, boys and girls soccer, and girls volleyball, um, neither teams have made the district or county playoffs. I do have two students of interest I'd like to highlight from our soccer team. Our soccer team wasn't wasn't too bad this year. We they had some some academic failures, which led to some of their downfall, but we did have some highlights. Um, one player, Arius, um, and I now always mess up his name when I when I say it. Concoria, Concoria, Concoria. He's a he made the senior All Star game for the county. He was the only player from our team that made it. He's a senior. He also he's also first county all. He made the first county All Star team also, and he's looking to go to uh, to play at Penn State York. We have also James Molina, who made second team all county. That is a feat that hasn't been done at York for a little while. So congratulations to those both of those players. And congratulations to the coach, um, Jeff Werner, for having um, those players of those caliber on our team. So the all-star game, um, if anybody would like to go to it, is on September, um, excuse me, November 18th. And I can get the... I think it's at Dallas Town, but I can confirm that. May, and Lori, maybe I'll send that out to you so you can put it on our district website. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like the specifics to um, A. B. White because I certainly want to go and support our young man. Great, thank you. <clears throat> our winter sports update: season for winter sports starts September. I mean, excuse me, November nineteenth. That is the first official day that any winter sport can participate and that's with tryouts or anything else so that's november 19th that's in about a week or in about two weeks uh the boys and girls first scrimmage for basketball is november 27th the boys are home and the girls are away that's a saturday our first game for both teams will be our 
golf tournament for the boys. That's our home game. Our our Otto and Vaughn golf tournament is here for the boys December 10th and the 11th. And the girls will be at Mifflinburg, Mifflinburg County. Uh, they they are away. So um, hopefully good things for, for both our teams to start off the season. And um, I know everybody will be following them. And um, as I felt a weekly schedule, <clears throat> I um, pay attention to that because they always can change um, with weather and, and uh, things being out because of whatever COVID reasons. So always pay attention to the weekly schedule more than the general schedule because that is always subject to change. And that is all I have for this evening. Okay, thank you, Mr. White. A couple, couple of things. Uh, and not to give any more shine to one sport than another, but I know uh, Coach Stoner often highlights the academic achievement of the uh, football team. So I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the soccer players as well today. So just wanted to give a shout out to um, Coach Stoner for a fantastic uh, football season this year, both yes. off, off and on the field. So just wanted to um, highlight that. Um, can you just talk a little bit about, um, since we're going into the uh, winter sports, uh, as far as, uh, you know, we're still in COVID, just so as a reminder, uh, student, staff, community can hear what the uh, COVID rules are in attending the um, basketball game since it's inside. Right now, we, we don't have any rules per se, the PIAA, they're not coming out with any definite rules for indoor, uh, um, for indoor, um, participants um, who come to the game. Um, we have still had that in, uh, in place where we um, like the anyone coming to the game to have their um, face mask on. So coming into the building, they should have a, a, a mask on coming into our games. Other than that, uh, there's no PIW regulations at this time. Okay, yes, I just wanted to make sure you mentioned the, the mask wearing. Mm -hmm. with that so that's still, <laughs> excuse me, still in that yes okay did anyone else have any any questions or comments for uh mr white this is vice president kennedy i didn't necessarily have any questions i just wanted to also echo the same sentiments for um a wonderful season for our um, <clears throat> football team and uh, congratulations to the two young men that for the soccer team that made it to the all-star team. It's an amazing accomplishment. And, and um, we certainly want to highlight and recognize those young men as well. Yes, quite an accomplishment for them. Yes, I, I, I think the soccer team uh, is going to be a much, much improved team next year uh, under Coach Jeff Werner's direction. I know he has some things in store for them all season. So we're looking forward to uh, continuing on um, with some good play. Great, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Werner, for that. Uh, Dr. Berry, did you have any um, additional remarks? I certainly do. I also want to recognize the um, volleyball team for a good season. Those young ladies are rebuilding this year, but um, have put out a, a tremendous amount of effort. And I only got to two games this year, but um, I could see that they, they, they are putting their heart and soul into playing and they continue to um, do a good job and I don't want to forget our cheerleaders small but mighty yes, yes, um, they yes. were they were very diligent um, all yes. season long and um and and certainly supporting our, our bear bearcat football team so I appreciate all of the fall sports um, coaches thank you for your commitment and also students thank you for being scholar athletes. And, and doing what it takes to, um, to be well-rounded students. And I can't forget our band because they were also there supporting the football team. Right. And, um, they had a tremendous band day, which lots of alumni participated in. So I just want to make sure I didn't forget any of the fall sports and we gave them all their due justice. And again, um, coaching is a huge commitment both on and off the courts and fields. And, yes. um, and our and our coaches have done a phenomenal job. So thank you all for, for your dedication and continuing to invest in our Bearcats. Yes, and I did, I, I thank you Dr. Bear for bringing up um, the other sports. I did, I, I failed and remiss in, in saying that our, along with Warner, our uh, coach Jess, um, 
Coach Jess with the girls coach, uh, girls soccer team. Soon as um, they get a break, they'll they're going to be starting up indoor season for for them also getting conditioning again, you know, getting them acclimated to what it takes to be in a six eight program that is just not coming to um, practice or and, and trying out for the team the day the, the season starts. That it takes a little bit more dedication and and those are some of the things that our students have to get used to, and it seems like they are starting to get used to the grind of going to school each day, doing their work, going to practice, going home, doing homework, going to bed and getting up the next day and doing it all over again. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a grind for our kids and, and for any kid. And that's what it takes in, in, a, in our school district and in any school district, that's 6A, that we continue to play and, and good thing. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Mr. White. And that concludes the uh, athletic report. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much, Mr. White and Director Brown. Uh, next up is Buildings and Grounds with uh, Director Liggins. Good evening, um, board members, administration, all that are listening. Um, looks like all my uh, board members are present beside except, uh, President Breedman. At this time, I'm going to call on Mr. Hain to see if he has any updates for the board. Uh, thank you, Director Liggins. And uh, there are no other updates. Uh, the items for discussion are the standard uh, monthly reports that are presented, and that's for the month of October. And that is all the information we have for this month's um, Buildings and Grounds agenda. Okay, I do have a question um, on the summarized expenditure. It has from July 1st of 2020 to July, November 30th of 2020. Are those dates right? Um, which, okay, seven, seven, one, twenty. Oh, you know what? Those should be reading 21. 21. You are absolutely right. <laughs> and, um, we will get, also, yeah, we will get that updated for the, um, board report. Okay. And also for the summarized expenditures, um, on the second report, those states have 2020 as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. And we will rerun that and have it um, ready for the board meeting. Excuse me. This is Director Sweeney. I have a question. Are the figures right? The dates. Are the dates with the figures? Are they right? The, the dates. The, 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 the dates are wrong, but the figures are right? No. We they, have to go back over the figures yes. once we see the new dates. That's correct. Yes. Um, the, this is reflective of last year's report. Uh, it looks like the date was not changed in the uh, system. So we'll, we'll go ahead and make sure that that's updated. But I the apologize. figures are right. That's what I was asking. No, the figure, these figures are reflective of the date period that shows, which is last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need a new fiscal year. The figures that, for the new stuff for your event. That okay. is correct, Director Sweeney, yes. And okay, I, so I apologize us, for that. Yep. So you'll be sending us a new report out then? Yes. Actually, I in in the meantime, I'm I could probably run one and get that updated um, for presentation at a, at later in the meeting if you want, or just wait for the board meeting. It's your yes, choice. Please. Can you get it updated and present? Yes. I can I can do it right now. Thank you, sir. Okie doke. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Hain, for that. Um, and looks like there's no outstanding um, presentations at this time. Any other board directors have questions or concerns regarding those reports? Is they're going to be updated and sent to us later? Any questions for our superintendent, Dr. Barry? No, ma'am, no questions. Thank you. And um, Vice President Kennedy, that concludes my report for now. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Director Liggins and uh, Mr. Hain. Next up is our cafeteria report uh, with uh, Director Moore. Mm -hmm. 
Director Orr, are you on? Can you hear me? Yep, now we can, yes. Can you hear, you can hear me now? Okay, because I tried to make a statement back when Diane was doing her uh, presentation, but that's okay. Anyway, everybody's present except for our board president. Um, at, at this time, I'll uh, entertain a report from our uh, Mark Kamesi from our uh, vendor, our food vendor. Yes, thank Mark, you, ma'am. Good there? evening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, for the month of October, we only actually had one catering, and that was at the administration building. We catered lunch and breakfast for two days of meetings. Um, with respect to staffing, uh, we still have 11 open positions throughout the district that remain open. Um, and we are adjusting operations where we can to try to lessen the load on the people that are, that are working. Um, also want everybody to know that Daniel Stevens, our new chef, started last month on October 7th. And he's already having a pretty good impact um, between the catering and the high school uh, um, projects I've got them working on right now. Um, speaking of challenges, uh, we uh, have problems getting food in. Um, some of the things that uh, we're having challenges right now are foam trays, pizza crust, um, cereal, bacon, bottled water. Um, and we are looking for substitutes where we can. Um, we've got extra stuff on hand, trying to anticipate the fact that we were gonna have these shortages and we're working closely with our distributor to try to fill in the gaps where we can. Um, for commodities, government commodities, we use $31,336 in commodities in October and our ending inventory totaled $65,058. Um, on the, uh, the remodel of the cafeteria, I kind of saw this coming, but I wasn't sure. Um, but it looks like we are going to need to add another phase to our, our cafeteria remodel. No additional money. It's just that it seems like the graphics and the furniture are going to be coming separately. They're supposed to start installing the graphics tomorrow. Um, they will be, we picked this week because uh, we've got uh, early dismissal on um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So they'll be able to get into the cafeteria with the lift and get all of those acoustic panels up. And then after that, they'll probably be working close to two more weeks to finish up all the graphics. Um, after that, our, our, we're going to get the furniture probably during the Christmas break. That's our latest ETA. They've had a problem getting materials. They've got half of the uh, furniture done, but they want to deliver everything at once, obviously. And that's what we want as well. So um, we're working closely with them. I guess there's a shortage with fiberglass right now, and I'm guessing it may be sitting off the coast of California, who knows? Um, but that's what they're waiting for right now on manufacturing. In the meantime, we're gonna work with the audiovisual guys as soon as these graphics get up to get the monitors installed and finish up on the sound system. Uh, the last thing I have is the holiday meal. Uh, we will be serving the holiday meal in all schools next week, Thursday, the 18th. The menu will be traditional roasted turkey with gravy, garlic mashed potatoes, seasoned corn, a dinner roll, applesauce, orange juice, milk, and we're gonna have an ice cream cup for dessert as well. And the cost for adults remains at $3.40. And that is my report. Okay, thank you, Mark. And, and I know that there's, everybody is having problems with shipments. So I, I know it's, it's, it can't be helped. You know, a lot of things are sitting out to sea on the boats and all of that. If you go in some of the stores, the shelves are empty, you know, and not only that, too, people are just aren't going back out to work anymore. Right. So employee staff, I hope we don't have that problem, but I know it's a problem with shipments coming in. So, you know, we're doing the best we can with what we have. Still haven't been able to get up there to the high school yet to check on what's going on in the cafeteria, but I'm hoping things are going along very well. I'm sure they are. Yeah. The end result will be what it is, end result. Uh, are there any remarks from other board members? And Mark, I did. I was able to go in <laughs> and complete my survey for you. So I Great. got that done, yeah. Terrific, and, uh, terrific, Superintendent, thank you. Dr. Barry, you have anything? 
No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes my report, uh, Vice Chair. Thank you so much, Director Orr and Mr. Kamesa. Appreciate that. Next up is the Education uh, Committee. And Dr. Barry, did you want to start or do you want um, to have communities and schools? Um, Director Kennedy, um, if, if it's okay with you, I'd like communities and schools to start first. That's and, then, and then positive impact can go second and then Mr. Jacobson can go third. Sounds like a plan. So I did see Alex earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, do, you share, do you want me to share the, my PowerPoint that I sent out? You can't share your PowerPoint. We have Cliff has it. We have it. We okay. have it. Okay. Cliff All has right. it. There we there go. go. Thank you. No, we did have it. <laughs> it was there. I saw it. I did. I saw it for a second, too. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, thank you very much, um, Dr. Barry and the board and folks for having us um, here to present some of our findings from this past school year. Uh, Definitely been a challenge as everything else has been around here, but um, our site coordinators and our staff have been really pulling, pulling this together. Um, and we're happy to share with you some of our, um, our data. So we can go to the next one. And I do have my uh, Senior Director of Programs, Lindsay Sturkey, on this call as well, um, just to, you know, for any backup for any questions or, you know, stuff that she might be able to answer. Uh, we are continuing using our, our model at our six sites. Um, this is the integrated student support model. You know, we do the needs assessment as far as, you know, planning, support plan, and, you know, making sure that these students are being served um, for the needs of the building as far as, um, you know, what they might need academically, behaviorally, or attendance-wise, as well as basic needs that we have been um, really been a big, it's been a big, big ask this past two years. So, um, you know, if some of you are not familiar with this model, seeing it the first time, we, we will gladly share it out to you. Um, it's been um, an effective model that we've been, community the school's national office has been using, and um, it's, it's data driven. So, this is what we've we've been working on. So, next slide, please. Uh, these are the sites that we're currently at. Um, Ferguson is our community school model that we have. We have a community school director and a student support specialist. That's the uh, one that we do have in the uh, district right now. Um, continuing to have two site coordinators at the high due to the uh, you know high demands and needs of that building. Uh, we feel we can definitely serve more, make more of an impact with having two site coordinators now. They're serving ninth and 10th and also 11th and 12th grade. Um, uh, okay. Next slide, please. Um, here's a snapshot of some of our data from last year. Um, I can't see that one part. Okay. And uh, so the, for the 2020-2021 school year, you know, CISPA was able to leverage over $235,000 worth of in-kind goods and services, uh, whether that's being donations, volunteer time, you know, et cetera. We always try to put, you know, make sure we're putting a value on you know, what we receive so we can, you know, make show our impact for uh, funders and stakeholders. Um, there are some of our findings or our numbers right now that we did. 91% uh, of students with behavior goal met that or, um, made, or made progress. So that's definitely something we'd love to highlight as far as our site coordinators always coming up with new, new ways to interact with the students. Um, okay, next slide. Um, our notable partners I would really like to highlight, uh, United Way is, you know, as a partner agency, they've, they've been, you know, really helpful with providing us with masks to get out there as well as any other basic needs, um, and, and literacy. Mrs. Central has been a huge, um, help over at Ferguson with getting, um, you know, all sorts of basic needs out there to that community school. Um, Girls on the Run was a huge success at, you know, Hannah Penn that we're really trying to, um, vamp up again this year. We've gotten some more coaches involved. We got some more um, volunteers involved. 
So, and you know, it was a huge hit last year. We saw at uh, Ferguson with, um, you know, we heard Chief Muldrow was out there as well. So, you know, these are just some of some of the partners that we've been working with so far this past, actually the past two years now. All right, next slide, please. Yeah, as we discussed, some of the highlights that we have, um, especially Ferguson, we'd like to mention briefly the um, the books and the literacy that they have been really trying to make a huge impact in that community school um, with getting these books out to every single student and every single parent that you know that wants one, we make available to. Um, you know, they're going to be doing it again this year in another book giveaway. They get lots of books in through other libraries in the county, and uh, some of the colleges do you know book drives for us. So. We're definitely pushing literacy as much as we can, considering, you know, the trends that were happening over the pandemic. We're trying to get these kids really back into literacy and, and doing any kind of literacy nights that they can over at that building. All right, next slide, please. And we have a little video testimony we would like to share with you from our, uh, one of our principals and a student. Good morning, I am Principal Mathis of Ferguson Community School, and we are here to talk about our community and schools team, Ms. Reed and Mr. Prego. This dynamic duo is helping us create intentional partnerships with our local businesses and churches like Thrive Church, who is located directly down the street on Newberry. Um, they have done beautification for our outdoor landscaping, they do classes with our students, introducing them to values and different things that will help them become community leaders and participants. In addition to that, we receive um, masks and teacher journals and coffee mugs, which if you don't know how important that is to our staff, trust me, they need to be refueled and re-energized daily. What I want to share about them is that they are a part of our team. They attend our professional learning community meetings. They talk to our teachers about what students need. They even assist teachers on getting books based on brown and black heritage. And that gives a diverse reading library for our classrooms. So not only do they do those minor things that I talked about, but they are just part of us becoming the most fabulous Ferguson school we can become and I just want to give them a huge thank you. The school district in the city of York and Ferguson Community School would like to thank you, community and school, Ms. Reed and Mr. Prego. I'm feeling down. Mr. Prego like gave me that like, outlet to like, tell me what's like on my mind. He can like, like um, help me like, through the day. But like he's like the one person you can go to that like it's like tell you about life, not tell you about life, like just like help you with like everything that you need. I feel like going down is a pretty good one last year. All right, you folks have any questions about you know programming or anything about services we're providing or data? Thank you, Alex. I don't necessarily have any questions. I just want to thank communities and schools for um, its representation in, in uh, almost all of our buildings and the work that's done uh, in the community partnerships that are built. So we're really grateful for the support of all the community partners that support you and your work as well. Thank you. This is Director hey. Orr. Director sure. Orr. I would also like to uh, thank him too, since uh, Communities and Schools was implemented several, several years ago, it has been a tremendous program uh, for our children and, and the parents in our schools. And I just wanna give you my thanks too for your services and taking care of all of our children in the program. You're welcome, thank you. Directors, any other questions or comments for Alex and communities and schools? Dr. Barry? 
No, ma'am. I just like to echo my thank you. Alex and I have a standing monthly meeting and I get to tell them how much we appreciate them every month. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Alex, for, for um, your presentation tonight and, and sharing an update with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. You are welcome. And Dr. Barry, who did you say was you'd like to see next? The positive impact group will go next. That's um, Bishop Stanfield and, and company. Are you there, Bishop Stanfield? Yes, I am. Good evening, everybody. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening, everyone. It is a uh, honor uh, to have the opportunity to present our program. My program manager is on with me tonight, Jason Somerville. Um, I lived in yes, York, I lived in here. Dallas town for about 15 years. I used to own the Cold Stone over on Market Street. And uh, due to concerns with my mom and my family, I had to come back to the Maryland area, but I definitely miss uh, living in Pennsylvania, much more peaceful up there. So um, it's on, a, we have my PowerPoint, Dr. Barry. They do. Oh, okay, wonderful. Jason, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jason Somerville. Uh, like Bishop Billy Stanfield said, I am the uh, program manager. Amen. So, um, Cliff, with, can we pull up his PowerPoint, please? I just sent him a text to time to get the PowerPoint up. Thank you. Yep, he's there. Which uh, which PowerPoint are we talking about here? The third one or the two C. <clears throat> New Vision Positive Impact Movement. Yeah, it's two C there. Hope I see it. Give me one moment here. I thought I already had that, but here we go. My apologies. This guy right here. Yes, sir. That that would be it. Okay. Um, just want to say that we are not the panacea, uh, but we are a great uh, solution to school districts that are, you know, having climate issues. We implement our services here in Baltimore in eight schools. We implement services through our partner, the King of Kings Foundation in New York City Schools. Uh, we have assisted Chester Community Charter Schools, and we are presently implementing services in Franklin Township, New Jersey. And so uh, we are a academic and behavioral intervention strategy, strategy specifically designed uh, for vulnerable and high-risk students. Uh, we are approved by the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners, the New York City Board of Education, Chester Community Charter Schools, and Franklin Township, New Jersey. We are also identified uh, by the Maryland State Department of Education as an effective model in decreasing, in decreasing negative uh, youth statistics. Next slide, please. Okay. We are a restorative program um, that motivates and prepares students for academic and personal success while building resiliency. We do this through mentoring, restorative practices, social emotional training. I am a trainer, trainer of restorative practices. Okay, I've gone through several uh, certifications for social emotional character development. So through restorative practices, social emotional training, life skill coaching, peer mediation, character development, and self-esteem building. Uh, we are committed to creating a turn of youth culture by achieving positive outcomes with high risk and vulnerable populations. Uh, we recruit what we call credible influencers or credible messengers. Uh, these are people that we recruit from the communities that have a report in the communities. There are several people up there in York and the communities doing the work. We seek to recruit people from the neighborhoods, um, from the community that we know that can build a rapport with young people. And uh, we position them to allow them to positively impact our students. And so they mentor these youth will require training that is relevant to establishing appropriate values and character. Next slide, please. 
So our mission, uh, the goal of the program is to positively impact high risk and vulnerable populations to reduce disruptive and violence incidents within targeted schools and communities, and thereby change the cultural environment by engaging youth in restorative activities with current adults who serve as role models, mentors, life coaches who provide relevant information to enable youth to develop a mastery of life skills. So the people that we hire, they have the ability to look at life through the young people's circumstances. I believe uh, that that is a, an important uh, characteristic to have in order to be able to positively impact our young people. I remember back in the day, Will Smith had a song that said, parents just don't understand. It's a different environment that we have right now. Even if, no matter if it's York, Baltimore City, we have more problems because it's bigger. New York has even more problems because it's bigger. But the reality, what we're noticing is all over the nation, uh, especially since the pandemic, things have been heightened. You know, while the students really couldn't congregate and come together, they was, you know, having their little arguments on Facebook and losing their aunties, their grandmothers, their friends, you name it. Um, and so when the schools opened back up, all this came clashing back in the schools. And we're also what we've noticed is that schools have become like the surrogate home in a lot of cases. Uh, we, when we sit in, in, in to, when we sit in a meeting, a parent-student conference, or we're in a conference with the principal, and, and the parents begin to talk, we understand in a lot of cases why the student is, you know, kind of uh, displaying what they're displaying in school. And so we've also understand that a lot of our students have been traumatized in a lot of different ways from their upbringing, from the community that they are exposed to. And we all know that we cannot separate trauma from the behavior. And so now all of this is coming into our school building and uh, it impacts a lot of cases, our teachers' ability to manage their classroom, the environments gets disruptive. And no matter how good our educational plan is, if the climate is off and it's disruptive and students don't feel safe and administrators and teachers don't uh, feel safe, it is very difficult for learning to take place. And so I'll keep going, but I'll get more into, you know, how we approach schools and, and things of that nature. Uh, but our success is these credible messengers, these culture influencers who have the ability to invade youth culture. Okay, you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> Jason, did you want to chime in, sir? No, no, you don't. Okay. Um, and so our model is research-based. It is nationally aligned. Uh, we believe it's highly effective, and we do have proven results. And so our model is consistent with uh, Title IV, one, Section 4.1 of Student Support for Academic Enrichment if Every Student Succeeds at ESSA. <laughs> uh, and National School Discipline Guidelines to reduce out-of-school suspensions and address disproportionate suspension, suspension rates of students of color and those with disabilities. And so presently, our program is ranked a four by Baltimore City Public Schools, Franklin Township in New York, uh, and in Chester. I mean, we present a strong rationale. We are undergoing a IRB in Franklin Township, or we'll be part of a research study in Tank Franklin Township uh, as they will be uh, rating and evaluating the evidence of our effectiveness so that we will become a bona fide evidence-based model. We are in partnership with John Hopkins University. Dr. Phil Leaf could not be on tonight because of previous commitments. And so everything about our program is evidence-based. It is aligned with ESSA. It is designed to produce outcomes with what we may call vulnerable or difficult populations. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so we can, we, with climate control and crisis management service, we assist with climate control, conflict resolution and mediation. Just because we suspend students, that doesn't mean that the beef is squashed. Uh, what happens in communities spills over into our schools and what happens in schools spills over into our communities. And so we provide that conflict resolution because we wanna kill the beef. You know, We wanna make sure that nothing doesn't pop back up later on in the school year or this doesn't carry over into the communities because the longer this goes on, it creates fertile ground, fertile ground for something drastic to happen. Okay, we are assist with the student support team. Now, in Baltimore and other school, other school districts labor this differently. But in Baltimore, most of the students on our caseload that are having issues 
some of them have I, um, um, IEPs, uh, and most of them are working with a social worker, mental health provider, uh, and working very closely with their school counselor. And so we partner with the student support team, or similar to what y'all would call that in, in your school district, to provide more, stronger wraparound support because we do visit homes and the people we hire have a rapport in the community. A lot of times we're able to build that bridge from the community to the school. Uh, you know, so a lot of times young people might not open up to their social worker or open up to their mental health provider. We want to provide that support so that they feel free to open up. We believe because of the rapport we're able to build with young people, they share sensitive information to us. We provide crisis management. You know, that means when crisis happen, we're there. Uh, we provide cafeteria monitoring. We assist with hall monitoring because you already have hall monitoring. So we help to train hall monitors. We assist with hall monitoring doing mass movements. But our priority would be to target. We call it the 10% rule. There are 10%. If you got a thousand students, roughly there's around a hundred of them that's in most cases disrupting the school district. We have figured that out and seen that from the school districts that we've worked in around the country. So our goal would be to target uh, that 10%, to target those high flyers, uh, get into their lives, mentor them, get into the community, get into their family lives, give them a reason to make you know, responsible decisions. We know we're in education. We live in a time now where it's cool to be dysfunctional. I've never seen nothing like it. You know, we, we work in Poly High School also here in Baltimore. You know, Poly is one of the, top academic schools in the country for engineering, science, and technology. We rank, I think, in the top 50. And even at Poly, they need our services. The kids at Poly will take their Poly shirts off and stuff because they still have to ride the same buses because in most cases, they would get bullied because they are deemed out of touch, not popular. Why? Because they're smart or they're trying to make the right decision. And so now we live in a culture because of social media, and that's our biggest threat is social media, because everything that young kids do, they do it on social media, they're bullying on social media, they're doing a whole lot of things on social media and that's influencing their thinking. And so um, we also provide restorative practices. Uh, we believe that we have shown that when our credible messengers are conducting circles, providing the mentorship, we're able to get close to the problem. Um, I've said this to IRP personally, I believe in restorative justice. I believe in restorative practices, but circles are only effective to the level that you have relationships with people in that circle. Circles are only effective to the level of the person facilitating the circle. Uh, and so we work hard to get the right people that we know can engage this population. Uh, because right now, just like in Baltimore, York City and all over the country, the pandemic has kind of, you know, we all have come back dealing with more issues and more problems. And, and we're very busy, you know, so we're not the panacea, but we wouldn't be in nine schools in Baltimore and other schools around the country if the model hasn't shown potential to be effective. I'm familiar with York City because I lived up there for a while. And any city I move into, I make sure I understand what's going on. A lot of people from Baltimore have moved up there. A lot of them from Philadelphia has moved in. You have a high Latino population. Uh, it's like a big melting pot. And so there's a lot going on. And we truly believe that our model can assist. We do school and community visits, uh, meaning um, sometimes there, there could be an issue where, you know, we have children in the middle school who are related to people in the high school and we have a conflict. Uh, we make sure we get into the community. Uh, because you, you have to have no the pulse of the community. You have to have people working who can go in these communities and get people to talk. We have to show them that it's, it's cool to sit down and work it out. You know, uh, and so next slide, please. Jason, do you have anything, sir? Jason is better than I am. He's the program manager. you have anything you want to add, Jason? Thank you, sir. Yeah, um, I, kn I know that um, because of some of our um, time constraints, if we can slide down a little bit to um, slide 12. Um, I think, I, I know that the board all have already went over uh, some of the uh, okay. presentation already. Well, and have so, y'all, have they may, I don't know. Have they, Dr. Barry, have they gone over some of the presentation already? Have y'all had a chance to look at it? 
they have they have not gone over the presentation. Okay. But, much, they, but, today, but today is um the day that we would, would do so and then we won't be voting on this until the December meeting. Okay. So we're we're it, it's okay if you're skipping around because we we will be having more conversations okay. afterwards. All right. So this 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 real quick right here, Jason, then we can switch. Okay. Uh, it's it's a lot of here moment. about why it works. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Excuse me for a yes, minute. This director, director Sweeney, could you send us all your presentation? We did. We sent it to Dr. Barry. Oh, uh, may we have it? Yeah, I sent it for her to distribute to you. Yes. Okay. I'll forward it to all of you. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So, Jason, you can go to the slide that you wanted to go to. Yep, slide, slide 12, I believe. Just talking about our approach. To cities? Yes. Go. It was back some. He had went past it. Can you go back, please? Right there. Yep. There you go, Jason. Oh, okay. You want me to read it? Uh, it's just talking about PIM's um, approach to new cities and districts. Um, approach number one, uh, talking about uh, partner partner with a site leader, organization, SLO, or in, in that region. I know we spoke about that a little bit already before. Um, or, or approach two, where we train a, a site leader organization, school district. Uh, to implement PIM mentoring model, um, or approach number three, which is providing ongoing training uh, to a SLO or a site leader organization and local. There's a fourth district. part. I have to interject. There's a fourth part that's included in my other PowerPoint because I didn't know we was going to be able to share or not share. This will be an extension of New Vision Youth Services because of the proximity of York to Baltimore, where we will hire and train the community people up there to work in our model. You can go ahead, Jason. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We can go to the next slide. And we talk about why PIM may work. It creates a positive learning environment where students can learn and teachers can teach. Advantage two, PIM and uh, culture influencers have relatable cultural backgrounds and experiences. Uh, three, po positive relationship with students motivate uh, learners to achieve. Uh, advantage four, Culture and fluent mentors are skilled in mediating and resolving conflicts. Advantage five, young people learn how to communicate effectively to resolve conflicts and express their feelings and thoughts. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, our objective. Uh, we will provide group and one-on-one -on -one mentoring from students on caseload as well as general population. Visit homes uh, once a quarter or as needed and engage the parents of students in the side to the program. Facilitate character development life sales sessions for high-risk students assigned to the program. Collaborate with the School Wholeness Wednesday Initiative. Model for students how to use mediation and conflict resolution skills effectively. Next slide. Outcomes, okay, increased in the number of gang incidents of disruptions and violence in targeted populations, attendance and truancy. We aim to increase the, the attendance rate for the targeted population and decrease the truancy of incidents. Suspensions, decrease of the number of suspensions due to disruptive behaviors. Community collaboration, increase parent engagement in targeted populations and demonstrate positive school citizenship. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide. Yeah, I took that out. Okay, creating an impact. Impact one, culture influence will be able to facilitate parental participation in youth development. Impact two, there will be a positive change in attitude and increase in the incidence of violence, arrest, crime, a reduction in school truancy and school suspension among programs. I can't believe, yeah, and I'm just walking in the door. Why are you just walking in? Thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. No problem. Arrest, <laughs> crime, a reduction in school truancy and school suspension among program participants. And impact three, there will be a better relationship, bridging gaps of communication and reducing feelings of mistrust between community residents and law enforcement officers.
Next slide, please. Okay, so we recruit and train. Everybody will be trained in the, who works for us. They are trained in the latest evidence-based practices. As a trainer, trainer, restorative practice and some of the certifications that we have received in um, SEL or SECD, we make sure that our people are trained uh, so that they can assist our students in establishing appropriate values and character. Next slide, the impact. Okay, now we have a 4P prototype. Uh, impact two is our 4P four, uh, our four P positive impact prototype. We want it to penetrate. Uh, the culture will be penetrated through our culture influencers who have the ability to invade youth culture. It's important to be able to get to the young people's mind. You know, whoever influences the mind controls the culture. We want to be propulsive. We want to be a driving force. Uh, and repositioning our youth, youth to a positive trajectory by meeting their personal needs through these mentors' ability to build meaningful relationships. Program. Uh, we will implement evidence-based practices. We're not reinventing the wheel. What makes us effective are the people we hire and train to implement these practices. And we are proficient. We collect data. You know, we are evidence-based model. We don't believe in going to a city and we can do this and do that. We have measures in place. We have a Google Docs system that is built out to record um, our program measures. We want to evaluate our effectiveness. If you guys decide to go with us, we want you to know that your money will be well spent. You know, we want to make sure that we do what we say we're going to do and, and things of that nature. So that's the 4P prototype program, penetrate, propulsive, program, and proficient. Next slide, please. I think we're about finished. We provide character development, activities, uh, values clarification. These are things that are important, leadership development, cultural awareness, academic excellence, and so forth and so on. Next slide, please. Restorative circles. Um, have, I'm pretty sure your district have undergone training by IRP. So you're, you're pretty familiar with restorative practices and restorative justice, okay? So we also bring that. And you guys will get a copy of the slide presentation so you'll be able to go over it, okay? Next slide, please. Thank you. And this is the, you know, this is the goal of the restorative practices continuum. And you'll be able to look back over this again, you know, when you have a chance to look over the presentation. Next slide, please. Social emotional learning. You know, this is very important. We, we want to make sure that, that we help them. A lot of our young people are suffering. That's why they're acting out with gun violence and fighting and doing the things that they're doing. We want to assist. When, when, when a young person has not been reared properly and their orientation of life has been just bad and negative, that definitely negatively impacts their psychosocial development. When they, they begin to see themselves in life through that trauma. Psychologists have well noted that you cannot separate trauma from the behavior. While we're not clinicians, we're talking about giving them what they haven't received, building that trust, building that relationship, being committed, uh, someone that can hold them accountable. We've learned that once you build that rapport with them, their walls come down. We are 24 seven mentors. They call us all day, all night, uh, because we're not only assisting them, we're assisting their parents. Next slide, please. I'm pretty sure we're close to the end. We use a TOS curriculum. So we have a, a life skill binder that guides our life skill activities. We have our TOS curriculum that we utilize. You know, when we're holding these groups and doing things, they are armed with information. The TOS curriculum is wonderful because it gives them wisdom from the elders. It, it starts off dealing with your orientation. But these curriculums are only as beneficial or only good to the level of the mentor's ability to build that rapport. And so we do have uh, curriculums and things that we utilize uh, to help assist us in reaching the young people and communicating to them effectively. Next slide, please. We should be at the end, Jason, close to it. There it is, thank you. And so that, that's a, just a watered down version. If you have any questions for us, you can ask us. Um, I wasn't aware of the time constraint, so thank you for reminding me of that. But this is Positive Impact Movement. Uh, 
And the KFK is our King of Kings partner in New York City. And so, as I said before, we implemented Baltimore City and eight schools. We are in about five schools in Queens and we have our partner in Queens has a very large contract with the mayor's office. We've, we've assisted uh, uh, Chester Community Charter School District. And presently we also have a partnership with uh, Franklin Township School District of which we'll be going through a study. We have been in Atlanta, Georgia. I've helped the program go to Atlanta, Georgia, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Chicago. Uh, so we have helped this program go across the nation and we have been impactful and effective in some of the cities we've gone in. And so it was an honor to present to you. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to possibly working with you. Did you have anything, Jason, before we turn it over? Uh, no, just uh, just a thank you again, um, just to echo those sentiments. Thank you for allowing us to uh, present um, what we have. And uh, like you said, if you have any questions, you can ask any questions. We'll try to answer those um, as effectively as possible. Hello, this is Director Brown. I had a couple of questions, I guess, or just comments. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the presentation and you are definitely speaking our language. We understand that what goes on in the community does evolve into our uh, school buildings. We know that. Um, we also know that uh, parental participation is, uh, <laughs> is one of the keys. I'm glad to hear you uh, talk about that. Um, I'm also glad to hear that um, once you train uh, folks in our community to work for you, that there is some type of evaluation metric that um, is, I, I guess is ongoing that um, you said you'd be using Google Docs. Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to visualize is, will the folks working for a PIM, will they be in all the buildings or just our high school or do you expect to have a standalone building and those students go to you? How, how would this look? We work in the schools, ma'am. No, we would be in your buildings. In we all, in, all of the buildings? If that's up, I, I don't know. That's that's how we have to plan it out with Dr. Barry. Like we have 40 employees, right? About 40, you know better than I do, about Jason, about 40 employees. Yeah, about 40 employees. employees. It depends on the size and need of the school. And so now this program is designed to assist schools in moving forward. But we also go into the community, into the homes, because we understand that the homes are in the communities are influencing the schools. So now we're, we're there uh, to, to help the students. We, we, do, uh, uh, we do classroom circles with teachers to help. They, you know, we do a lot of things to help. Yeah, I was just going to say where, where, where we're most effective is, um, you know, we're in, in the school building for that uh, seven hour day, eight hour day. Um, and we where we're most effective is we usually have a room with uh, with inside that uh, that building, whether it's a high school, middle school, okay. whatever it is. Um, and we operate from that room. We're able to do our groups from that room. We are able to do our one on ones from that room. Um, and then, um, like we talked about with climate control and things like that, we um, go out into the cafeterias, we uh, walk around the hallways, we uh, interact with different students and staff members uh, throughout the day. So we're always there. Uh, we're always there to catch uh, any type of uh, conflict resolution that needs to happen, any type of mediation that needs to happen. Um, and so, yeah, we are, we are a program that is inside that school uh, for that school day. Okay. We, we, and also we are uh, something else we do, Jason. We um we provide classroom monitors for teachers. Mm -hmm. So say as this just a teacher that's not connecting. You know, we'll meet with the teacher, talk with the teacher, and we'll do a community circle right there in that classroom. And 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 but you know, when teachers are really open to community, because there, there's a problem there. We we need our teachers to be able to manage their classrooms, right? And if they can't influence the students. You know, we have about, you know, after the first 30 days, this is what we've learned. You can tell me wrong. We haven't wrapped our hands around that culture. It gets out of control. And I'm pretty sure you have some heroes inside of these school districts that are good with building relationships and while the students are with them, the students are on point, they're focused, and then they go into other classrooms and they just, Act you know, up. and so <laughs> we want to uplift the teacher at the mm -hmm. same time. And we want to also help the young people 
to understand the importance of the education because all those values, mommy said values, has gone out the door, you know, because in this day and time, it's cool to be dysfunctional. It's cool to act like you don't care and, and, and wild out. We've had children just go off, come into the police office, school police office with and start crying. Mm-hmm. Walk right back out the door and put on the show for their kids, for their students. Mm-hmm. Knowing they great go to baby bookings, what we call, you know, in Baltimore, we call it baby bookings when they have done something to that level. But um, our goal is to uplift, to move that school forward, to help create a positive uh, climate, positive culture. Separate from this, we train school districts. We train all of Franklin Township school districts and how to overcome barriers, social barriers and things of that need, the things that hinder us from connecting with young people. Biases, yep. Yeah, as part of this, we will train, help you. Part of this will include training your hall monitors to even be more efficient. Because even in the hallways, they have to present themselves a certain way. They have to be able to build those relationships on the spot. And I'm pretty sure you have some star hall monitors that are able to move them and, and they listen. We want everybody to be that way. We want all our teachers to be that way because why? That creates, you know, support. That creates accountability. That creates that, you know, in our schools here, we're not tolerating that. And that's just going to come from all of us being on board to make it happen. Okay. All right. Thank you. I look forward to um, uh, having the presentation on hand. Thank you. Directors, um, just a quick comment. This is a lot and it's and it's heavy stuff. And I don't want us to rush the decision. Um, so I, I pushed the decision for the December meeting, but I asked Bishop Stanfield to come with his team to present because I certainly wanted him to be able to show his passion, to show his um, results. I, I did include a few slides in my presentation to kind of give, because he's being a little modest about some of his work. Um, but I certainly want to get the presentations in your hands. And um, if you have burning questions that you want answered now, um, I'll ask that if any director has one question that they'd like to ask, I would certainly hope that we can get him to uh, him and his team to answer that. But I would prefer if we could co- collect our questions and then have them and I'll get answers for, for those questions before the board meeting. Um, if you decide that you want to vote in a November meeting, but my recommendation is that we wait, get all your questions answered, see all of the, um, the data and information and make this a December item. So, um, that, that's my recommendation. And, um, I'm sorry to, 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 in, to, in, to interrupt, um, Ms. Um, Kennedy, but I just wanted to put that out there. No, I thank you for that. Cause I, I, um, <clears throat> In true fashion, I have a list of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I, I too, like Diane and um, Director Brown, was really, um, you know, clapping at a lot of the things that, that, that were being said. And I'm really interested. And so I do have a lot of questions, but I just had a one quick one for now. Was it, maybe I missed it, but how long has your program been around? Since two, well, we started in 2005. Okay. At first, we were working with, so I got started by a man named Bob Wilson out of D.C. It was the violence free zone. And I helped him take the violence free zone around the country. Mr. Wilson now is in his 80s. Okay. I've been to the White House, been endorsed by the Bush administration, been endorsed by my brother's keeper. I, I don't, um, I, I've worked really closely before with uh, Judah Brown Diana's from the Advancement Project. I have contracts with the mayor's office in Baltimore uh, right now. Um, I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff. I'm in partnership with John Hopkins University um, and so forth. I just don't like throwing a lot of accolades out there because I'm really about the work. If I'm in eight schools in Baltimore City and I'm in partnership with the mayor's office in our city, that should tell y'all something right there. This Baltimore, one of the most dangerous cities in 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 the country. And right now, I would be out walking the community right now if I wasn't on here with my partnership with the mayor's office. So we have Squeegee Youth in Baltimore. I'm the lead program for the Squeegee Youth in Baltimore, uh, as well as in eight schools. Uh, soon to agree to be more than that. We'll be meeting with our CEO, Dr. Santa Lisa, on this Thursday uh, as she wants to kind of institutionalize 
what we do so we can be a little bit more effective. Because in Baltimore, they leave it to the principals to interpret the district's initiatives. So in one school, we can look this way. In another school, we can look that way. She wants to make us more of a district initiative. So when we go into school, schools have no choice but to utilize us and our strengths. Because this is more than hall monitoring. We have to build relationships. I leave my life in, you know, I'm just want to let you know is that I know a lot of the movers and shakers in York because I moved up there, moved up there. I have my pulse on the communities. Any city we go into, we do our research. And it has been proven to work. You pair the right people who can be a bridge between the school and the community. We can stop a lot of the stuff. We have to make it cool for our young people to sit down. These beefs are occurring because no one is not saying you're not as a whole, as adults, we're not looking at life through our young people's reality. And so we talk at them. Sometimes we got to come down to their level. Not that we we going to condone what they do, but we got to understand what's ticking them, what's, what's driving them. Then you got to have people who can get in there and pull them back in. And we've learned that when you pull them back in, you know, but I want you to ask your questions. I have Mr. Somerville. Yeah. Mr. Somerville um, is better than I am, okay, asking questions because he oversees the school while I'm traveling mm-hmm. the nation getting contracts. I want him to, that's why he's here. If you have any questions, Bishop, ask him, he'll answer. No. Bishop Stanfield, this is Director Orr. I just have Hi, one, question for you. Uh, one question for you myself. Uh, now you said your program is in a charter school in Chester, Pennsylvania. We is were. The we, only, it, it, you said you were. We were, we, we helped there, Chester community. We helped the whole charter school district in Chester set it up. They run it themselves now. Okay, my other question is too, that's the only Pennsylvania school that you are involved with? That is the only Pennsylvania school that we have been involved with. Uh, Mr. Height, CEO Height of, Pens- of Philadelphia, when he was the chief of staff in Prince George's County, we were in, through, a, through our brother program, we were in seven schools in Prince George's County, okay? Uh, it didn't work, uh, he wanted us to assist him when he first got the job in Philadelphia, it just didn't work out for that. You know, yeah, that, that was the question I have for you about Pennsylvania schools. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Hello. this is Director Sweeney. Hello, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, Director Sweeney. Um, whew, I'm off 83 now. Um, question. Um, after we get the presentation, will we have a chance to talk to them again? Or we'll be just getting a presentation and voting on the presentation. No, you'll have an opportunity to get any of your questions answered that you want answered. And if there's a need for me to bring him back for a second presentation in December, I am happy to do so. And we're well, happy I, to to, him, so. I, I thought may, maybe a conversation. I mean, I might read something and want clarification on it and might have a follow up. That, that is fine. Be, that that know, is fine. Whatever okay. it is that you need, we will make happen. Okay, just check it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Can I say, I want to direct something to uh, Director Orr. Uh, Director Orr, what we have discovered and going around to probably 12 cities or more, what we understand is um, in the city environments, urban type environments, these all these school districts are suffering with the same issues. You just got to find the right people from those communities that can qualify to work in the district that can build rapport with these young people. All and, of I, your- I, and, yeah. and, and I understand uh, I understand what you're saying. I've been on your city school board for 12 years and yes, I ma'am. understand the makeup of our district and, and these young kids now, this generation of children. So yes, I ma'am. understand perfectly what you're saying. Yes, I yeah, do. We, and we're not saying that your problems. Not- we do have problems. We're not immune to any of it. Yes, ma'am. We do have our share of problems. And we, we do understand that York is still York, Pennsylvania. It's not Baltimore. And so this is why we recruit people from the area. I have an advantage because I lived up in the area for a long time, spent a lot of time down in the York area, hired a whole lot of William Penn young people to work at my Cold Stone. And uh, so it's still York, and that's why we have to recruit people from the area and train them because they understand the area. While a lot of the same statistics are happening, no matter if they are less because of small, they're still happening. 
And so, but there are some things that are unique to York, Pennsylvania, that's not even unique to Philadelphia. That's not even unique to Lancaster. York, Pennsylvania is York, Pennsylvania. And we have our own set of issues in York that we have to be able to address. So our program is not cookie cutter. It'll be tailor me for the demographics of York and the information, this information that y'all give us. You know, we don't come saying that we're going to superimpose. That's why we're having this discussion, because the way it looks in Baltimore may be different in York. It may look in somewhere else, may look differently. And that's the that's the unique thing about us. We understand that it, the program implements, you know, maybe a little different in different places based on the dynamics of that particular school district. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Bishop Stanfield and uh, Mr. Somerville for a, a great presentation. And we look forward to uh, reviewing your presentation in depth and getting back to you with any questions. Um, thank you. In the future. Uh, thank you so both for your time. And we're going to tell Dr. Barry, we're going to email you the updated one. For you to disseminate to them uh, as soon as we uh, okay. We, okay, we've already sent out the first one, but, but we'll send out the revised one as well. Okay, thank you so much. Y'all have a nice evening, everybody. Thank you very much for thank having you me. too. Thank you for your time. All right. All right. Um, next up is first time with Dr. Jacob Jacobson. Is Mr. Jacobson on? It is Hi. Dr. Jacobson that he is on. Okay, I did not see him, but thank you. I am here. Thank you so much, Director Kennedy. Are you all able to hear me now? We are. Yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to sharing this information with you. Uh, in a nutshell, FIRST 10 is a partnership between the district, early childhood programs, and community programs to support children and families in the first 10 years of a child's life. We've been working in the city of York for about 18 months. And I have to say, I'm really, really pleased to say that the city of York is becoming not only a state leader in first 10, but a national leader in this work. And this work is already having an impact and it really has a potential, the potential to have a big impact over time on children and families. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I work, uh, I'm David Jacobson. I work at the Education Development Center. We're a mission-driven nonprofit uh, that focuses on education, health and expanding economic opportunity. And I work with many colleagues around the country who have a, a lot of expertise in early childhood and elementary school education and care that we draw on as we do this work. Next slide, please. So there are three big ideas I wanna share with you from the get-go. The first uh, idea is that research supports a community-wide approach to the first 10 years. And what this means is that in the city of York, we have created partnerships uh, 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 with our nonprofit organizations, with our schools, with our early childhood programs. Uh, and we're um, bringing together not only the schools and early childhood, but also our, our health and social service programs. Uh, next slide, please. This, the second big idea is that innovative communities all across the country, both ones I've studied and also communities um, that are part of the First 10 network, have created a roadmap that addresses teaching and learning in schools, partnerships with families, and comprehensive services. Next slide, please. So First 10 provides a framework a planning process and a set of strategies to guide these partnerships. So let's dig in a little further. This work is really um, aimed at addressing the fundamental challenges of poverty. We know that 45% of US children under six live in low income uh, families. And we really have a consensus nationally that early childhood is part, is a big part of the solution to addressing the challenges of poverty but how we address the challenges of poverty is really critical. Next slide, please. Uh, we, uh, our systems of education and care uh, 
tend to be very fragmented. We have big gaps between zero to five and K-12 education and big gaps between schools, uh, health programs and social services. And the uh, upshot of this is that then, yeah, next slide please, is that children experience inconsistent quality, gaps across the age span and a lack of coordination between education, health and social services at each stage of development. Uh, there are two movements nationally working on addressing that fragmentation. The first is really uh, aimed at improving quality at each stage of development, but particularly about improving alignment between early childhood and preschool in particular and the early years of elementary school. So right there in the middle of that, of that uh, graphic where you see four years old and five year olds, that's a big gap that we need to address. So there are a lot of folks around the country working on addressing that. Next slide, please. There's another movement, and this is one that was already, it's already taking place, and Alex talked about this. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, often called community schools, and this is about bringing health and social services to schoolhouses so that families can access them much more easily and matching families with the services that they need. And, and, and communities and schools does a great job with this work. So I have been studying these movements and supporting communities in these two movements for many years. And back in 2017, next slide please, I received a grant from a California foundation and began studying communities that were doing both well. I talked to national leaders, I interviewed uh, 18 communities, and I focused on these, uh, which I um, visited uh, most of these communities, and then published a report, next slide please, called All Children Learn and Thrive, Building First 10 Schools and Communities. And this is where I proposed the First 10 model and have been supporting um, uh, communities around the country in implementing this model ever since. Uh, and I'm gonna share this model with you in just a moment, but next slide, please. I'll just briefly say that now we're now doing this uh, model in um, uh, five states. Uh, we began with the state team in 13 communities in Maine. We're working in uh, 12 communities here in uh, Pennsylvania. We're also working in Rhode Island, Alabama, and about to start an exciting project in Michigan. Next slide, please. In Pennsylvania, we began in Lancaster County, uh, working in five communities uh, that expanded through some uh, state support to eight additional communities. And the city of York was one of those at eight additional communities. And I would say, uh, so we're really happy with all of this work in South Central Pennsylvania. We're learning from each other. We had, when we got started 18 months ago in York, we had some colleagues from Lancaster join us and share some of the exciting work they were doing. And now we've shared back uh, with our colleagues in, in Lancaster County. Uh, and I would say that of these, uh, of these communities, York has really come out and, and taken a lead. We have a bigger, um, bigger district commitment in York, I think. And we also have uh, uh, six funders, six York County funders that are investing in this work, uh, which has made um, it a really uh, exciting, comprehensive initiative. Um, the, the funders that have come on board have made uh, a, a big difference. Um, and so we're able to go deeper and further in the city of York. Next slide, please. So here's the model in a nutshell. We begin with a commitment to educational and racial equity in the whole child. We summarize that in the expression, all children learn and thrive. By all children, we aim to eliminate disparities by income, by race, by other cultural factors. And by learn and thrive, we have a whole child notion in mind where we have health and mental health outcomes, social emotional learning outcomes, and academic and cognitive outcomes in mind. Next slide, please. We then create a partnership of schools, families, and uh, community organizations. And the idea here is that we're, these organizations are all uh, interdependent and we get better at what we do through our collaboration. Next slide, please. So then what we do is uh, three, we implement three big strategy, three broad strategies. Uh, in a plan that covers the first three years of uh, the, the first 10 years. And so the first strategy is to collaborate uh, to improve teaching and learning. 
And in York, what that really involves is creating a transition to kindergarten plan. And this is about supporting children and supporting families as they transition from uh, ages three and four into our schools. And the research really shows that if we make that transition well, if children are supported and families are supported into the as they transition into kindergarten, they learn more in the kindergarten year, they're better prepared for first grade, and they have more success in their career, in their, in their, in their uh, education careers. So we have created a, a transition to kindergarten team in the city of York that as uh, I'll talk a little bit uh, further, but we are uh, doing a whole series of activities just not only to support children and families, we've involved our libraries, the Martin Library in this work, they've become an excellent partner, they have created book nooks in the community. Um, and we also are bringing together our early childhood educators with our kindergarten teachers. This past summer, we had 50 teachers come together um, for the whole day to focus on social emotional learning. And that wasn't just the, uh, the district kindergarten teachers and the district pre-K teachers. It also involved community-based teachers from around the country, uh, from around the city. And we, we sat at mixed tables for the whole day. Dr. Barry was there. Um, um, and we uh, had variety of presentations and a lot of group work on social emotional learning, really pulling the city together in a, in a powerful way. That was a, a very successful day. Um, the next strategy is to coordinate comprehensive services. This is about improving partnerships with health and social services, improving referral systems. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the things we do is to create school connected play and learn groups. We bring together caregivers and children. We do uh, good developmentally appropriate activities. We sing, we dance, we um, uh, read stories interactively. We do some art, we do movement. Sometimes we do some cooking. We build trusting relationships with our families. We integrate some caregiver learning. These are for children ages zero to four and their families. We implement this as a series, and we really emphasize uh, developing peer connections with these fam uh, uh, peer connections with the family. So family to family connections. We connect them to health and social services, and we connect them to schools. Uh, next slide, please. During the pandemic, we did these virtually. This is uh, these are York uh, City children and York City uh, teachers. So we did this virtually, but I would, I'm happy to say it at Ferguson, we just started our first um, uh, in-person uh, play and learns, and we plan to do six series of these play and learns throughout this academic year at, at, least at five different uh, uh, schools uh, throughout the city. Next slide, please. Our third strategy then is to partner with family families. This is about increasing family engagement, creating different structures for family to participate and uh, engage, uh, uh, share their views, elevate the family voice. Um, and so we do a lot of those kinds of family engagement activities. And then in addition to that, and this is something that all of you on the board can really help with, is that we're running, uh, we're, we're beginning a citywide parenting campaign for families with children ages zero to four. Next slide, please. This campaign is called The Basics. It was developed by Ron Ferguson, uh, a professor at the Kennedy School at Harvard, um, a uh, head of the Achievement Gap Initiative at Harvard, and a um, this was funded by the Black Philanthropy Fund. And the idea is to saturate the community with five simple messages. Uh, maximize love, manage stress, talk, sing, and point, count, group, and compare, explore through movement and play, and read and discuss stories. There are really um, well done four minute videos about each of these basic messages. There are tip sheets. These, these videos are in 14 different languages. The tip sheets are in different languages. And the idea is that everywhere uh, you go in the community, a trusted ambassador is sharing these five basics uh, with families with young children. So wherever you turn, you're hearing about these basics, learning about them, and then that's impacting you as an adult with, um, with young children. Next slide, please. So we have presented to neighborhood associations. Our library is, uh, uh, um, is supporting the basics. 
Uh, we are uh, conducting outreach to faith-based organizations to share the basics. We are uh, sharing this with our early childhood programs, as well as with our kindergarten teachers, so that they can talk to parents for who have younger siblings, uh, you know, the younger children back at home. So uh, we hope to reach your, um, we presented to Family First, one of your health clinics, and we hope to share this with uh, other family doctors and pediatricians. And so again, this is something that you can be very uh, helpful with. Uh, so the next slide, please. Next slide. So um, the last, oh, nope, go, go back one, please. The la the, uh, so, so those are our three core strategies. Over on the right, you see lead strategically and continuously improve. Um, it's very important that we now manage this work and we have created um, a citywide steering committee. Uh, Director Kennedy sits on that uh, uh, committee uh, with us. Um, as well as we're creating a family advisory group. And then we have five different teams implementing this work. And I'll show you that in a minute. We develop, uh, next slide please, we develop plans uh, for this work. We meet regularly to help manage the implementation of these plans. And we use implementation benchmarks to monitor our progress, including um, uh, academic outcomes, family engagement, et cetera. Next slide please. So here's the overall model, uh, uh, the first 10 framework that we're implementing in York. Next slide, please. And here's the structure that I mentioned earlier. So we have the first 10 advisory team that meets quarterly. There are senior leaders uh, from around the, com uh, the community, nonprofit agencies, Dr. Barry, other district leaders, Director Kennedy, um, uh, and funders. Uh, sit on that first 10 advisory team. We're creating a family advisory. And then you see a transition to kindergarten work group that's been meeting. We've been doing this work uh, since right before the pandemic began. Uh, I've done a whole uh, series of successful transition uh, to kindergarten activities. I'll tell you one simple concrete thing that we've done. We created a transition to kindergarten form. So that is citywide. What that means is, is that every pre-K teacher, every Head Start teacher, every community-based preschool teacher uses the same form to provide information about a child. Gets a parent, parents sign off on that, and then that form is then routed to the kindergarten teacher so that the kindergarten teacher has a good sense of who that child is from day one. And that helps the kindergarten teacher then support that child um, uh, right from the get go. Well, now, if you're a kindergarten teachers, right, our kindergarten teachers play such an important role in our district. If you're a kindergarten teacher in the city of York, you're getting the same form, regardless of what program that child is coming from, making your job easier, making it easier to do your job well. So that's just one small concrete example of what that transition to kindergarten group is doing. We have, I mentioned the school connected play and learn groups. We have a, a, the district is implementing a really comprehensive early literacy initiative. Uh, just last week, we worked with uh, district pre-kindergarten teachers and kindergarten teachers um, during a professional development day where they were working on implementing your new curriculum and um, uh, kind of the state of the art in terms of early literacy uh, teaching and learning. And then we're working in two of your schools in a more in-depth way where we're creating uh, first 10 community schools. So collaborating with Alex and communities in schools uh, uh, at Ferguson and at Hannah Penn and um, doing lots of great work uh, 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 with the basics in those schools, with the play and learn groups in those schools and bringing together pre-K and K teachers to make that transition easier. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, uh, so actually, we'll back up uh, one. So that's first 10 in a nutshell. I welcome any questions that you have. Um, I will say, I'll conclude by saying uh, uh, this work is, is um, really moving uh, in a positive direction in the city of York. And uh, we were, uh, first 10 is getting a lot of national attention. And we were invited to do a presentation at a national webinar. Uh, I think the, the most well-known early childhood webinar series um, run by the Hunt Institute. 
uh, out of North Carolina. And uh, that in January, Dr. Barry will be joining me as well as the, uh, 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 the leader of uh, early childhood from the YWCA. And we'll be doing a national presentation on First 10 and included in that will be the, the great work that's happening in the city of York. So with that, I'd love to hear any questions that you have and uh, look forward to working with you on this. Dr. Jacobson, um, this is um, Director Kennedy. I don't necessarily have any questions. I just want to say thank you for um, the, the continued work that's being done in the district around First 10 and being able to see um, where we started with this program and, and, and all that's happening within the district. Um, it's really exciting. So thank you so much for, for your team and the effort that's occurring within the school district of the city of York. Thank you so much, Director Kennedy. I really appreciate that. I uh, th thanks so much for serving on our advisory team. We'll be uh, we'll be bringing together that team soon, and um, yeah, it is exciting what's happening there. It's really the work has really taken off. Other questions, comments, observations? Anytime um, I hear York and national and state leaders that makes me excited because <laughs> um you know we have a great community and some great kids and teachers that are, are working hard for our early childhood kids so it's nice to be able to see the fruits of some of the labor of all the partners and hopefully um you know we'll continue to do the great work that makes us um leaders and dr jacobson I appreciate all of your support and guidance as um, we move to to get first 10 in all of our schools eventually. Thank you so much, Dr. Barry. Yeah, that's a, uh, I, I, we would love to do that. It's been a pleasure working um, uh, uh, both at the school level and community wide. Some of the work we do is, is community wide. And then we do, we've, we've done this focus uh, uh, work in the two schools. And that's one of the ways in which York is exceptional, taking that kind of two pronged, two -pronged approach. Uh, any other ways I can be helpful? Any other, any other questions I can uh, address? All right, thank you so much. Let me know if anything comes up. Uh, I, I, again, I appreciate you, uh, the board's support for this work, and um, uh, I, I'm around if, if any questions arise. Thank you, Dr. Jacobson. Thank you all very much. Have a nice evening. You Thank well. you, you too, Dr. Jacobson. Bye-bye. Dr. Barry, you are up. Okay. Mr. Cliff, I'm ready when you are. This month, we are um, beginning our uh, with our Learning Safely update. Well, almost ending with our Learning Safely update. We're usually first in the presentations, but um, today we've moved along um, to the end. So um, next slide, please. We always center with our learning goals of safety, excellence, personalization, and communication. Hopefully, if you're getting tired of me saying that, that means that you've heard it over and over again, and it is ingrained in what we're doing on a daily basis. Next slide, please. We always report our level of community transmission, and I will be certainly glad when we can move to the left a little bit, but we continue to be um, in high status and we're not alone in company, as you can see. Next slide, Cliff. Okay, so I told you that I would re be reporting COVID cases by month. And before you, we have added the remaining cases from October and the cases beginning in November. So, um, you know, the, the COVID cases are still very unstable in the schools um, and, and the community. One month will have lower numbers and then they spike. Um, another month will have higher numbers and then they go down. So it, it's very difficult to see trends right now, but we'll continue to report monthly so we can start looking at those trends. Next slide. So um, I decided that um, reporting um, enrollment by month um, is probably one of the better ways for you to see kind of the trends of what's going on with our enrollment in the district. 
um, we started kind of reporting in October. And as you can see, history repeats itself with our transiency um, and our population. As you can see, the um, total district numbers have increased statistically significantly in one month. Um, well over a class of kids there from, from 6251 to 6290. Um, so enrollment continues to increase. You see some differences as you look down um, going both ways, but for the most part, most of them are, um, when there's a jump, it's, it's a substantial one. As you can see, the K-8 schools have had a pretty big jump. And we have some schools that are saying the same, like our cyber charters um, and our charter schools. And um, Bearcat Cyber, as you see, has had um, a, a little bit of a decline with students going back to our school, our home schools. Next slide. We have our transportation report for the month. Um, we are um, transporting 123 students um, by our hall monitors. FNS is doing 30, as you can see going across. The numbers for, um, we have seven that are not confirmed. At William Penn, as you can see, there's the numbers. Um, again, we continue to chase a moving target. Kids are moving in every day. And if they're moving in and have IEPs, or are cons considered McKinney-Vento, then they become children a lot of times that require transportation. So every time we think we've gotten a handle on this, we're getting more kids in and we continue to keep trying to, um, to, to chase that moving target. Next slide, Cliff. Barry? Yes. Dr. This Director Orr, before you move away from the, the uh, frame you, you just had, can you put it back? Go, will you go back? To yeah, this one? one, the transportation one. Ma'am. Uh, can I ask, who are some of these other transports? Faithful, Kelly? Those are other Lincoln. Those are other companies that we've always used. Oh, so F and S, we've used we've used several different companies for years. F and S is just I the know one. F and S. Yeah, yeah, that's just the one that you uh, hear. But okay, Durham, we're only transporting one child. Jacoby one. Yeah, they, they can't. They can't possibly go with one of the other yeah. transports. They're probably transporting a child to a um residential tree a, a, a far distance. That's probably why. Okay, yeah, because I know we have the transport. Uh, yeah. Trust me, we, we we are we are squeezing as much blood as we can from a turn up from these guys. Some of them are doing two and three runs for us, so yeah. we're get we're getting as much as we can. But but uh, but the well, one with uh, one with one single student, chances are they're transporting so far that we can't do any more. So so. Cost, cost wise, though, we couldn't really transport that child on one of our hall monitor vans. Not if, not if they're not if not if they're going a far a further distance. No. Oh, what's the furthest we transport? I, I don't know what the furthest is, but I, I do know we have over an hour for some of them. Really? Oh my God! Yes, ma'am. Over an hour. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's that's further that's almost going to Baltimore correct wow and then Durham has the wheelchairs that's the that's okay. the wheelchair buses so th those vans and buses can only fit so many kids on them so they're the, they're the two that transport at a distance Durham well, and Jacoby Durham is the wheelchair th those are the wheelchair buses so we can't okay. fit we can only fit so many. They only yeah, allow us have so many. So, so which one is is traveling the distances? Just the Jacoby. J people? Jacoby is probably one that's traveling the distance. But Durham has the two Durham kids. One is in placement, and one is in one of our K eights, and they both have wheelchairs. Okay, but they're city, but they deliver this, those children right here. Correct. The city. Correct. Okay, so it's the Jacoby. People. It's the one that's traveling. Yep. Wow. And and it's either a homeless child or a um, special hmm. education. 
Or it could be a special ed child too. It can. A multiply handicapped special education student. That's true. That's that's going that doesn't live in the city. No, 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 no. I didn't say they didn't live in the city. They may be going to a placement no, outside the city. Okay. And we're required to transport. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead and continue. So due to the fact that we have a variety of compensatory ed services that are due because of transportation delays, we are we have an obligation to fulfill those hours that have been missed. So the Office of Special Ed has put together uh, several plans to meet the needs of those students that need comp comp um, comp mm compensatory services. So um, they've communicated with all the schools and the, administrator, the administrators as well as the families for academic work. So they are getting work. They're not just, not, we're not ignoring them. Um, due to the disability, the family will be offered compensatory service on a case by case basis. So they're not the same. Just because this student, student A, compensatory services may look different than student B's because of the complexities of their IEP or their individual family situations. Um, packets of work have been delivered to the homes of the parents to pick up work from school. There have been Zoom sessions going on with the teachers for students um, and time for compensatory services over the summer for 2022 will be determined as the students' IEPs deem fit. So we, we are already planning for makeup, for compensatory services for the summer now, because that has that's that's going to be a heavy lift, and it's going to require an enormous amount of staff that we will have to pay for summer services. So we are beginning those planning stages now. Next slide, please. A few updates for you. Um, the date for the next faith-based meeting is before you. It's Thursday, November 18th. We had our first meeting and I think it was pretty successful. I'm looking forward to, to meeting with that group again. I, I believe that group is growing. Um, Kira has told me that there are four new members that will be coming that didn't come last time. So that's a great thing. Um, HR is working on um, a support services job fair that will take place on Thursday, December 2nd from four to seven at Hannah, Hannah Penn um, in the lobby. Um, that fair will target buildings and grounds employees, food service employees, PCA security, and the after school program. So we are trying um, to do some different things that are a little bit out of the box than what we have normally done for recruitment specifically in the special, um, the student support services realm. We are planning a Teachers of Color and Diverse Learning Job Fair um, in the district on Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. Seems like so far, much real far off, but we've got to start that planning now because um, it takes a lot to pull off a job fair. Um, We'd like to have some discussions um, beginning in December for offering critical needs recruitment incentives. We are all looking at the same pot of teachers. The shortages that the school district of the city of York has are not unique to the school district of the city of York. Everybody needs math teachers, science teachers, special ed teachers, EL teachers, and speech pathologists. So we are all competing, not just countywide, not just IU-wide, but nationwide for the same pool of teachers. And there are going to have to be some out-of-the-box thinking and some incentives to entice these young people because just saying, hey, I'm going to give you a job is not enough anymore because there's five or six other districts that need them that are willing to do the same thing we are. So I, I think it's time to start having some conversations about some recruitment incentives, like maybe early signing bonuses 
or um, if you're teaching in a critical needs area area that we offer um, an additional stipend for, for joining our team with the caveat, of course, that they have to stay a certain amount of time. Next slide, please. Some other updates. Dr. Berry, may I ask a question, please, before you go to the next slide? Can you, can you um, go back, please? Having the, well, one second, Ms. Tanoa. Can I you know, just about where the... Go ahead. I just about where the job fair is going to be at. It's just, just about where the job fair is going to be at. William Penn, I know, but William Penn Cafeteria is more accessible to people. Why Hannah Penn and not William Penn? Is there a reason? Because it's more accessible. Parking, it's parking, is, parking is not great at William Penn. Hannah Penn and Smith that have unlimited a lot right But that's if there's no games going on. <laughs> that's if there's, you know, four to seven is right around the time we have winter sports going on. So if there's a game that day or something else going on, parking will be at a, will, will be at a premium. And plus, remember, the cafeteria is under construction right now. Okay. I and I don't, and I don't know, I don't know when it's going to, when it's going to be finished. Okay. 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 That was the only reason I asked. Okay. Cool. I it, would be more it would be more space. You're right. You're right. But I, 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 you know, Mark just said that they're going to be delaying that. And I don't know what the delay is and how long it's going to take. So um, we know Hannah Penn's available and we know that sports won't keep us out of there. So um, that was why we picked it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, the district will be purchasing. I have been trying to work with the Ginkgo company um, for um, test for um staff members that are not vaccinated or choose to not disclose their vaccination status. Um, thanks to the HR department, they have done some research and there is a company that does some self-test for staff um, called um, Antigen Self-Test that we can purchase for, um, for testing to be completed weekly and we can get the results back in time. There were several companies out there but many of them had some high demands that we couldn't meet. Like we had to have a, um, a, a certified nurse issuing the test. Well, our nurses are already underwater in, in, in task and work. So we were looking for self-test. Um, we, we also ran into a couple of companies um, that were requiring a turnaround time more than three days. And that's not gonna help us either. So um, this is the company that does self-test. We can have the um, results pretty immediate and we will be able to do what we need to do. So the three set-aside grants um, that we are working on, they are due on Monday the 29th. We are getting um, really close to getting them done. Um, the one grant that's like 1.9 million, it's almost 2 million has a lot of restrictions. 30% of the money has to go here. 10% of the money has to go there. So being that we have gotten so many different grants thrown our way, um, it's a little difficult to navigate the money and meet the, the requirements. So it's re requiring, for lack of a better um, analogy, a lot of bobbing and weaving to make sure that we are meeting the standards of each of the grants but simultaneously being good stewards over the money and not just saying, oh, we'll do this. Um, and I'll give you a specific example. One of the set aside grants is saying that we have to spend 30% of the funds on SEL, so social and emotional learning. So um, we were looking at the things that we are already doing, like communities and schools, um, or like PBIS um, with SPEC, as good candidates of utilizing SEL so we can channel some of those, channel those funds to pay for those services to free that money up in our, um, in our general fund. 
So um, it's a they're, the grants are over a period of three years, um, but that is kind of what we're looking at. Homeless Awareness Week is from November 15th to the 19th. On that Friday the 19th, we're asking that everyone wears red shirts and red masks to support homeless awareness. And my last update is um, we will be hosting a COVID-19 clinic for staff booster vaccines or initial COVID-19 vaccines on Friday, November 19th from 3.15 to 4.15 at Ferguson, K-8. And then from 4.30, my zero's missing, to 5.30 at Hannapan, K-8. Um, if additional need is presented, more clinics will be scheduled around the district at other locations. One of the things we want to be really careful about is not scare scheduling a slew of vaccination clinics and having poor attendance at them because we appreciate our partners at Rite Aid who are agreeing to do this for us, but we don't want to um, waste anyone's time. We wanna make sure that their time is well spent and that we're doing what we can do. Next slide, please. Our monthly enrollment by school. As you can see, again, some differences. Um, you will continue to see that and it'll show us as we move through the months to transiency in the district. Next slide, please. Our YCEA attendance. Um, remember, we, we are going from committee meeting to um, so roughly around 20 to 30 days at a time. So the first time we did this, we did a 30 school day total and was at 931 days for the first 30 days of school. We did this again for a 20 day total and we are at 682 days in the second month of school and beginning the third. Next slide. Okay. What, anybody has something to say? I'm sorry, go back. Go back on Cliff. Did someone say something? Okay. Uh, probably was just me doing an explanation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to say. Okay. I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> oh, no, okay. no, I better not. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, looking ahead. Some dates to keep in mind from the 10th to the 12th, we have parent-teacher conferences. Um, 10th grade um, is from 12.30 to 3, 11th from 12.30 to 3.15, and from 5 to 8, and 12th grade from 12.30 to 3.15. We have an early dismissal on December 15th, um, and the UVA building level principals will submit their agendas for that um, to Dr. Gloucester. And we have also have um, EA, ELA curriculum re review rollout for marking period three and math PD for seventh and eighth with Institute for Learning. Uh, I do have a question now, Dr. Barry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, schools Are schools open Thursday for Veterans Day? Is Veterans Day not a, a holiday? Schools are in, right? Um, I believe they are, yes. Yes, okay. schools are in. Okay. Schools are in. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Okay. Consideration and approval for a high school plus program um, at William Penn Senior High School. We talked about this last month, um, but did not have the resolution on the agenda. So we've put it back on for this month with the resolution. Um, consideration um, and discussion. I, I have approval there, but I, I think we need to move that to a discussion for the positive impact program at William Penn Senior High School to improve um, climate, culture, behavior, and attendance. If I heard um, one of the directors ask whether or not it was just the high school or all the schools, it can be whatever we want it to be, but just know that the more schools, the more cost. Mm -hmm. um, my What my intention was, was looking at um, our immediate need, which was William Penn Senior High School, um, and then if there was um, 
because this isn't a forever thing. This is a let's get it up and running and then we eventually can take it over ourselves because the, it's a hefty price tag, as you will see. Um, so um, just, you know, just my, my two cents. Um, I, I don't think we should rush to vote next week. I, I think we should talk about it. I, I think you should gather questions for me to get to them between now and board meeting, but I'll need the questions by Monday so I can get the answers. Um, preferably if I can get the questions at the end of the week, I can assure I can have the answers on Wednesday. Um, so just, you know, letting, letting you all know that again, you may decide, yeah, let's vote next week. Certainly your prerogative, but I always tell you, you pay me to give you my recommendation and I am always going to give it to you. So, um, CIS is requiring um, district contributions to their costs to equal 50% of their services. Um, this will begin in the 2023, 22-23 school year. Um, I am recommending the use of ESSER's funds to accomplish this. So we pay CIS $250,000 out of our general fund to provide services for our CIS schools. Um, that money is offset. Our, the cost of that program is more like 360 or so now they are requiring that all schools contribute a 50%, which is half the cost to do business. So if our contract is equaling 400,000, then they're expecting us to pay 200,000. If our contract is equaling 500,000, then we pay 250. So we are going to have to up the amount that we pay. And the cost of our contract is constituted by how many schools that we have receiving services, what services they're receiving. Um, the, the more schools that we have, the more cost that we incur. The more staff that they add at the schools that are there, the more cost that we incur. So they essentially give us an itemization of what, what they are providing cost us, and then they charge us accordingly. What are we currently paying? We currently pay 250000 So I believe with what they are requiring, our cost would go up over three hundred and forty thousand. Dr. Barry, will will we get an um, as much as possible and an itemized budget to review? Sure. Because I would like to see what what it is that. <clears throat> sure. Our cost is. Thank you. And then um, the um. The York Foundation is also supplementing our cost. So we do get money through the York Foundation. They do help um, to fund CIS in the district. That was a commitment of theirs. So we are getting extra funds to help us cover. But um, CIS is still doing some fundraising to get the rest of the money. And so they are going to require for us to pick some of that up. So. Do we know how much uh, funding we get from a community foundation? I can find that out. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I do have that information. So I'll have it at the board meeting. Okay. So I'll have it with the itemized list in my next report, Ms. Margie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, last but not least, um, you uh, know, I have been showing you numbers for since, since September and they're fluctuating back and forth. Certain things are remaining constant. Um, as you look at the enrollment in all of the schools for the most part, with the exception of the cyber schools, there's transiency one way or another. But I will tell you overall as a district, we are not losing kids. We are gaining kids. And we are gaining kids with who have continued social emotional health issues, um, mental health issues, as well as complex needs in special education, students who are um, NES, EL students, as well as just 
students who are requiring a lot of support. That being said, I do not feel like the numbers for William Penn Senior High School supports a full-time additional assistant principal. And I do not necessarily feel like the structure of Bearcat Cyber supports a day-to-day -day operation full-time assistant principal. But I do feel like we need to consider bringing back that floating AP position to help out with the day-to-day -day operations at Bearcat Cyber and to provide additional assistance at William Penn Senior High School. Um, we have, we are bringing forth a recommendation for an assistant principal to um, replace the assistant principal at um, the, the, the appointed principal, Kelly um, Kerner, Kerner at Good School. So her position is a vacancy at Ferguson. We are bringing forth a recommendation for that tonight um, in exec session, but we also have candidates waiting if this recommendation was to go through. We interviewed a series of assistant principal candidates and we do have um, our top three. So um, I'd, I'd love for you to be able to consider bringing back that floater position um, so we can try to get a handle. And the good thing about a floater is that they can go wherever we need them to go. But um, the need right now, in the past, we've used floaters for our highest number schools. Um, I am going to recommend that we use them for two of our highest need places right now, which is Bearcat Cyber and William Penn Senior High School. Next slide, please. So I am not gonna go through all of these. You saw them. Um, these are, and you have these slides with you. So I'm certainly not gonna read to you, but I, I do want you to take note of the scope of services. Um, character development is one. They have what they call cultural influencer mentors which is what they were talking about during their presentation. Next slide, Cliff. This is what the cultural influencer mentors will provide. Climate control services, values clarification, et cetera. Next slide. And you all do have a copy of this, so you can certainly look at it at your leisure. And, and please, 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 if you have questions, get them to me. And don't forget about the opportunity to take advantage of your one-on-one -on -one meeting with me between now and the board meeting so I can answer more focused and specific questions that you may have. This is what the administrivia um, and the administrator's responsibilities are from New Visions talks about the executive director and the administrators. Next slide, please. And there is your cost for the high school only per year. Next slide, please. As always, my favorite um, part of the presentation, the um, Bearcat shout outs. Um, our very own Director Kennedy is being recognized by the PA Federation of Democratic Women on Sunday, November 14th um, at 10 o'clock in Harrisburg. We're very proud of her. Um, that is, um, if that is something that you would like to attend, please let me know and I will um, arrange for you to get tickets. They, the cost of the ticket is $50. And we have several athletes below who have received either academic offers or football offers 
or college acceptance letters um, for full rides or some, some type of scholarship money. These young men here all happen to be football players. Um, as you can see, Jodan Nelson has received 16 offers to date for athletics. Stephen Rowland Washington has received 20 offers for academics. Najir Greer has received four offers. Jonas Sims, two offers, which are academic. Jaquan Jones has three college acceptance letters thus far. Ajani Shasher, I know I'm messing his name up, has two full ride scholarships. And Terrence Price has two college acceptance letters thus far. So um, we are very proud of our, our scholar athletes, um, as well as our, our, our very own director for their accomplishments. These young men are continuing to get offers and letters in the mail. So they're not done yet. In fact, <laughs> they're just getting started. Um, before it is all and said and done, I would not be surprised if the scholarship offers from our athletic teams total over a million dollars, um, that's pretty impressive. Um, it's always really easy to talk about the things that are not so good that are going on in our schools. But these young men certainly deserve all the accolades and attention that we are giving them right now and more because they are defying odds. And as the kids say, they understand the assignment. The assignment is a debt-free college education and they are working to get it. So kudos to them and congratulations. That concludes my report. Um, and I will take any questions you have for me. Dr. Mayor, I just wanted to send a shout out to this group of young um, men <clears throat> on their accomplishments. It's it's a really amazing to be watching. I see a lot of them um, being recognized and shared um, via Facebook, um, but we don't ever, or we rarely get the opportunity to collectively congratulate uh, more than one or two students at a, at, a, at a time that are at least brought to our attention. So I, I just want to say publicly that, you know, um, for all of our students to please share with their principals um, and the administration so that we can continue to acknowledge um, the hard work and the accomplishments of, of all of their students um, because this, this group could be, um, is certainly larger and we'd like to be able to acknowledge them as they do come in. So congratulations to this group of young men for their um, amazing accomplishments. I will continue to recognize these young men and women. It does not just have to be sports. All I have to do is get the information um, and I will, I will recognize them. So I want to be able to, to shout out and highlight as many as of our scholars as possible um, at both the K-8 schools and the high school as well. Yep, and thanks for sharing. And I uh, also echo uh, Director uh, Kennedy's sentiments on uh, the academic achievements from these football scholars. Any other questions, comments? Okay, that concludes my report. Thank you much. Thank you, Dr. Barry. All right, directors, we have, um, next up is um, items for discussion. We have quite a few um, items here. If anyone has any questions about any particular one of them, please let us know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There are a couple in, in here that include um, some student needs, a few other that are indicated by um, some needs of our special education department. Uh, we have a couple of, of uh, potential uh, resolutions for staff that are traveling for UVA. I think there are about five or six of those principals attending UVA. Um, we have our new MOU with York County, York and Adams County Mental Health 
Intellectual Disabilities Department to service our students in that way. Anyone have any, any questions on any of the um, items up for discussion that we will be voting on in our um, later in our November meeting? Any questions from anyone? Hearing none, Dr. Berry, any final comments for the education um, committee, please? Uh, D Director Kennedy, this is Ms. Thomas. She had to step away, but she just came back. No, ma'am, no questions. Oh. All right, thank you. Next up is our finance uh, committee and uh, Director Margie for. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, again, uh, well, we have two members missing tonight, actually. Uh, our board president, who is ill, uh, and one of the other members who are not present. So I will move down to items for discussion. And I'm sure you all received printouts of all the deposits and all the bills that have been transpired through the district. And I would ask Sean if he has any additional information to provide. Uh, thank you, Director Orr. Um, I will, I, I just wanna take a step back to the buildings and grounds real quick. The agenda items were, you don't have to go back there, Cliff, um, but I just wanted to mention that the, the reports were updated. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure what happened. There must've been a glitch and the wrong port reports were attached. So. Uh, they have been updated for your information, and if you have any questions, um, just feel free to bring them to my attention. Um, as far as the financial reports are uh, looking very well, the district is uh, doing uh, well and moving toward our uh, recovery process, uh, absolutely, um, in a positive direction. So as long as we continue that way, I think we will be um, sitting pretty well to help that process through. Uh, other than that, um, if there's any other questions, I can feel those. And, and the finance reports are correct. I did double check those. So I just want to make you aware of that. So. Mm -hmm. And we did receive them uh, via email. Thank you, Sean. Yes, uh, thank you. Any other, any other remarks from the board? Dr. Barry? Oh, it looks like she stepped away. She must have stepped away again. Okay, that well, if hearing none, that concludes my report. Uh, Madam, I have a yes. question. Hello. Okay, I asked for any this other This is remarks. Director Sweeney. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Director Sweeney, go ahead. Hello, this is Director Sweeney. Sean, thank you. Yes. Um, when I was on the road when you when you did your report, but since you came back to Buildings and Ground, uh, I want to make clear or find out uh, the positions for those uh, custodians that we need in the buildings, have we created those positions or we just need to fill those positions? Because we still need custodians in the uh, building, more custodians, like six in all these buildings, we need about six more custodians. Right. Were they created and yet? Or are there with something that needs to be filled? The, um, I'm going to have to defer that to our HR department because I don't believe we've created new ones. There are a couple vacancies that they're working through. And I believe the, the uh, job fair will help recruit more incoming uh, custodians. Director Sweeney, thanks, Sean. Yes, but is the uh, position going to... Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead. Uh, Director Sweeney, there, you know, there's, you know, as was mentioned before, um, you know, it's the, you know, the recruiting environment, especially, you know, for our support staff is, has been pretty difficult over the last couple months. Uh, we have standing postings for those positions. And as Sean was getting ready to say uh, that the support services job fair we're planning for early December uh, is an effort to try to bolster uh, that candidate base. Okay, so those positions are actually there. They're just not filled. That's what I was asking. Yes, ma'am. Because we needed to create them with the job fair coming up. 
I wanted to suggest that now to, to create. But we do have the positions open, just not filled. That's correct. correct. That's correct. Is that what you did? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other remarks? That concludes my report, Madam Vice. Thank you so much, Director Orr. And on to our general general policies and seeing that Director Thompson Morgan is not present, I will cover general policies and ask that um, Ms. Thomas, if you could give us a, a quick overview of the policy that um, you shared with us, please. Okay. Sure. Good evening. So this is policy 113.1 COP. It's a discipline of students with disabilities. And um, there are just some updates as there are with many special ed policies. On the third page under definitions, you'll see three uh, additions of information that's in bold and in blue. Um, and then there's a few other language changes throughout. And then on the next to last page, there's more new language about referral to law enforcement reporting requirements. Again, that's all in bold and blue. I'm not gonna read all that for you. Um, and that pretty much is it as far as what we have to add. Uh, these changes come based on changes in the law and the recommendation from the State Department of Special Education, um, still all pending solicitor review. And Jeff, I don't think I sent this to you yet, but I'll send it to you tomorrow. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Thomas. And um, just as an FYI for um, board members, as you recall, I often in um, our PSB um, legislative updates have been sharing quite a few um, different uh, approved legislative laws that are coming through. And, and what Ms. Thomas is sharing with us is virtue of some of those um, current changes uh, in law. So thank you, Ms. Thomas, for that. You're welcome. And I think we are at the end. Any questions, other other board members, before we uh, adjourn and go into executive session? Hearing none, we will adjourn our committee meeting for November 8th for the School District of the City of York, and we will adjourn and go into executive session. And Lori, I believe we received a second link for the executive session, is that correct? Correct, I just sent it. Okay, thank you all and have a good evening for everyone else. Mm -hmm. da, 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 ba, 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 ba.